Hello and welcome to another Donna Downey Artist Gang Tuesday with Fiona Poultridge. That's me! Now I have to apologise for the quality of the video this time. In my head it was going to work perfectly but when I started to edit it I went, oh you idiot. But I'll know for next time. So what I've done here is this is a really old canvas of mine that had some horrible red poppies on it. Didn't work for me. I tried, just didn't work. And so what I've done is I've covered it with some Liquitex gesso, several layers. And I'm using a catalyst tool just to dig into the wet gesso before I dry it and sketched out a little bit of a picture of a young girl here. Now I'm going to do this painting entirely with palette knives. I'm not going to use any brushes whatsoever. I don't know why, that's just how it happened to work out. I think because I started with the catalyst tool, I really wanted to continue with that sharp tool effect. So here I'm just going around the outside with some uh, more gesso with my palette knife and I'm just adding a little bit of highlights around where I've drawn the picture of my young girl. And in a minute you'll see that I'm going to come out with some golden colours. So this was the angle that I had it at, which of course is the wrong angle because it's sideways so I had to flip it which is why it looks funny. So the colours that I'm going to begin with, this is a quinacridone red. Reds make really great base colours uh, when you're layering acrylics. It just gives a really good depth of shadow. Some of the other colours that I'll be using are some uh, yellow ochre, some neutral grey, titan buff, and I think that's all I use in this bottom layer. But what this does is this creates a lot of shadow and a lot of depth. So the red here, what I'm doing is I'm trying to work out exactly where the, the darker shadows are going to be on my painting. So that's pretty much where all my red shading is going to go, which is actually not going to be red. It's going to be quite dark. And then I'm adding some teal. Um, and there are, I'm actually adding teal in both highlights and shadow areas. Teal is a very undervalued color when it comes to shading. Um, I find it really valuable. There's actually a lot of blue tones in our skin. And so when we add the teal to our paintings, it actually makes it look more of a skin tone, believe it or not. The next color I add is the yellow ochre. And it's really just filling in the gaps because this is where the skin tone color is going to come through when I mix it all together. You'll see as it works on its way. Um, these are really just the bottom layers so it doesn't have to look pretty at this stage. It just has to define where the shade and the light are going to be. As I add the Titan buff you can start to see that it becomes what Donna would refer to as a bit of a hot mess. However it's got to be a hot mess before it can be really really cool. Now this is the grey, the neutral grey that I'm adding. You could also use um, a darker grey. I just happen to have my neutral grey out so I found that that was a good colour to enter into those very dark shadow areas. Now with the palette knife I'm now scraping the edges back again. Because I added so many layers of paint I'd actually lost a little bit of the shape. So after I'd scraped the shape back down again, now I come in with my highlight layer. Oh no, look, I'm scraping a little bit more. Obviously I wasn't happy with that bit there. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come in with some white. Now I could use like a titanium white over the top, but I quite like gesso as my white. I know that's odd and it's probably totally wrong, but I really like the grittiness of it. I like the matte finish that it gives and I think that um, it spreads with my palette knife beautifully. So now I add the highlights over her shoulders and down the back and you can start to see where the light will be shining on the picture. When I look at light and shade I, I imagine where the sun would be coming in. Like where would the light be? And then I can start to imagine where those light reflections would be occur. Of course there's going to be shadow areas as well. So that's similar areas like around where her hair is, um, where her hair touches her shoulder and then of course where her arm is behind her body on the far side. Now here I'm using some Payne's Grey to put the deeper colours into the bottom of her hair. I decided that I wanted to have quite dark hair in contrast with the white light skin of her body. And so I find that Payne's Grey is a really good colour. It's not as black as, as Mars Black, but it still has that deep shadow look to it. And after I've fluffed around and added some of the Payne's Grey, I then again come in with the white and I add some more white over the top just to give it the highlights again. Next I add some Thalo Blue. And the Thalo Blue that I'm using has actually got a red shade. 
So that helps to bring out the warmer tones in her hair. I'm making it almost like an ombre effect on the bottom of her hair. So we've got the Payne's Grey, which is quite a dark, deep blue grey colour. And then I'm building it up a little bit lighter in the next layer with the Thalo Blue. And then on the top layer, I'll just add some more white over the top for the highlights. So here I am scraping out again with the palette knife, just cutting through the paint. It's, it's not quite dry, it's still a little bit wet, so I'm able to scrape away the excess paint to give her some definition back again. I wanted to add some more red to her shoulder and felt that it needed to have a little bit more shadow where her hair was falling. Can't quite get the mix right, but we get there in the end. And this is what I love about acrylic paint is that you can just constantly layer and layer and layer until you're happy with your end result. I'll probably come in another two or three times with different um, colours of paint just to add some more depth to this painting. Now once I've let the paint dry ever so slightly, sometimes I hit it with a heat gun, other times I let it dry by itself, I'm coming in with um, some vine charcoal. This is just a soft vine charcoal and I'm making a real defined edge. So where I've scraped the paint away, I've actually exposed the raw canvas. So the vine um, charcoal um, grips to that canvas beautifully. In the hair it's not so good because the paint's still a little bit too wet, but I'll come back in again later when it's a bit drier and define some of the edges around her hair. So here again I've come in with a palette knife and I'm actually drying a little bit of the paint with my heat gun. I find that it moves in a very different way when it's semi-dry. Not completely dry, but just the top of it's dry. It moves very differently. I'm desperately trying to work out how I'm going to get the shade in her back. You know, that hollow in your back. And I end up deciding that it needs Mars Black. <laughs> I didn't want to put any black on here, but once I actually put it in, you know that little that little dip we've all got at the top of, well, it's our bum, isn't it really? I mean, we'll just call it a bum. So you know that little bit at the top? That's the, what I was trying to define, was that little dip. And then I wanted to give some depth underneath her breast as well, because there's got to be some shadow there, as well as where her arm folds down to her side in the back. Now, so that it's not so black, because my goodness, Mars Black is so black compared to the other colours that I've used, what I did was I just gave a very, very light coat of the white gesso over the top. And finally, I've come in with the charcoal vine and just added that last little bit of shadow around her hair and in the fold of her arm. Now, time to do the background. So quinacridone pink and yellow ochre. These would have to be two of my most favorite colors to put together, pretty much mustard and pink. And again, with the palette knife, I'm just gonna smear it all over the background. I do add some white gesso just to, just to kind of, I don't know, tone it down a little bit because it is a little bit too pink. Um, and I'm making sure that I'm putting darker areas in the shade areas again, and then lighter around the top. So the back of her is mainly Mainly just all dark whereas the front of her where her face is and on the top of her breast it's quite light but underneath again it's going to be dark around the back of her hair again quite dark so in those areas I'll put in a lot of the yellow ochre and quite a lot of the crinacidone pink without so much white gesso and this gives it a little bit of um, shade and light at this point I think I'm pretty much finished I'm struggling with her left arm. I'm not quite sure what to do with that whole wisping off into nowhere, but I'll probably end up getting a little bit of paint and trying to disguise it and end up ruining it. But, <laughs> you know, that's what we do. So, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the um, painting. And again, I really apologize for the angle. It is atrocious and I promise I will not do that ever again. And thank you very much for staying with me. And I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.